Welcome back. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Apologise for the sun and my squinty eyes. <laughs> um, Range Rover. Don't know if you can see over my shoulder what the problem is. Can you put it in the car, please? Yeah. But uh, the front suspension is in the air. The back suspension, not so much. Uh, all the lights have gone out for the air suspension. It comes up air suspension inactive. I was trying to lower the suspension and the front left hand corner wasn't doing anything. So that pointed us to the front left hand corner. <laughs> I think when I took it off road the other day, well only in the field, the uh, I've caught the height sensor and it popped the ball joint off at the top and the thing had swung right round. So what I'm gonna do, I've, I've actually popped it back on, but I wanna get Tina to start it up turn it on full lock so I can have a good look in there and have a see what's going on. So let's go over here and have a look. Turn it full lock this way. Okay, straighten it up. Right, as you can see then, I've checked the height sensor. This was the side that wouldn't go up or down. And it just sort of sat there like this. <laughs> but then when it did in suspension inactive, this one is on maximum height. The rear, it could be on normal height, but it's, you know, sitting like that. The ball joint end is all connected up on here. Um, it probably wouldn't have taken much just to give it a little whack. They're only cheap and I have actually got a spare but I don't think they're interchangeable side by side to side. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug the iCar soft in, see what faults it's reading and um, clear any codes and hopefully get the air suspension working again. So we'll pop around the other side. a good sign. <laughs> Don't know if you can see this. Uh, diagnostics, enter. Land Rover, enter. It's a Range Rover. 2002 to 2005. Let's go for a smart scan. Oh, oh, I have to, hang on. Is the ignition on? Mm. No, don't touch it, not now. It might just come back saying no faults until we've put the ignition on. System scanning. 24 out of 30, 25, 6, 7, 8, Nine thirty. Air suspension read fault code. Articulation validity fault. Clear fault codes. Are you sure? that in the door. <clears throat> well the suspension's coming down. Yeah. Right, put the ignition on please. With it still plugged in? Yeah. Okay. The light's on. It's on. What? 
what levels it's sat it at. It says normal ride height. Right, so just start it up, please. Is the light flashing? Yeah. Right, can you put it on maximum height? The light gone off. Yeah, oh, it's still coming up at the back. Yeah. yeah. Any warnings on the dashboard? Nope. Right, can you put it back on normal height? And now drop it into access mode. Yeah. So, do you want to put it back in normal height for you? I wonder if that's been used for a while, because that's the quickest it's worked for quite some time. Is that normal height now? No, that's been going on. So if you can see, we're back to normal ride height. <laughs> so, we only did a little bit of off-roading. There was some branches sticking up in the in the floor or out the ground. I must have just caught that ride height sensor. Um, if they're going to pop off as of easy as that, well, I will have to change them. Um, but there you go. The iCar soft diagnostic tool for the Land Rover version two has come up trumps yet again. If we didn't have that, it would be straight into the garage to just clear the codes, and that's all we would have needed to have done. Once the codes were cleared, the car's reset itself. Um, I'm not sure if you can calibrate the ride height sensors with the R-Car soft, but you can actually go in and read all the millimetres. You, you can, with all these diagnostic tools, well, some of them, I mean, I had a cheap one for the Audi. That wouldn't do anything. That was a Conway something or other. But this iCar soft, you can go into quite a lot of detail. Uh, I've not really experimented with it too much because it's always done the job that we've wanted it to do, which is clear codes, read codes, clear codes, um, reset things back how they you know, should be. So that's another job that uh, we've managed to do ourselves on the old L322. And so that iCar soft was £100. You know, and it's paid for itself. We've had to clear codes on this car numerous times, and I don't know what garages charge nowadays, but <laughs> even if it was 25 quid a go, we've more than paid for itself. Um, it, it's not quite as good as one of these gap tools, which they all rave about on the forums and that, which, you know, later on down the line for the new car, I might look into that, because you can get a bit more in-depth with those and you can change things this, that and the other, but as it goes, we're doing quite well with the iCar soft. Uh, so yeah, we're back on the road, Tina can go shopping now. Hope you like this video. Please click your thumbs up if you did. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And from me and Tina, who's just filled the digger up with diesel. And it's full. And it, oh blimey. So it looks like we're off to work again this afternoon. <laughs> it's bye for now.